just wanted to mention this because I thought this was an amazing flipping pull and something that needs to be flipping acknowledged. Um, big up flipping Zendaya. Big up Zendaya. Big up Blood Clot Zendaya for doing the damn thing at the June 2 flipping premiere. Most of you have already seen this, that she's um, dressed for the, Zoom, for the Dune 2 premiere here in London and wearing head to toe Mugler, um, which is absolutely incredible. Um, no, it's not head to toe. I think the jewelry is by Buglari, I think, if I'm not mistaken. But she's wearing this amazing um, Thierry Mugler couture um, robot outfit that was, I think, debuted during like fall 1995 or something, one of their couture collections. It's an incredible piece to pull from because, if I'm not mistaken, it's not a remake. It's actually one of the original pieces that's been pulled from the archives. And she looks absolutely phenomenal. They're absolutely phenomenal. At first, I didn't really like the jewelry and the lack of the helmet. But I think now the more that I look at it, she's kind of got this almost like disheveled, sweaty kind of look about her in terms of the makeup and so it's also the hair. So it kind of looks like she's taken the helmet off before she actually walked out to the quote unquote red carpet. And I think the jewelry, the necklace actually adds a little bit of glam, right, to the actual outfit and kind of makes it look, you know, just kind of switches up the kind of vibe of it a little bit. On the right here, you kind of see the original um, during the obviously the Mugler show with the original helmet there and the model kind of wearing it looks absolutely incredible and then obviously on the left here you see Zendaya wearing it and looking absolutely great and I think what this has done is it's kind of reinvigorated this conversation around styling when it comes to celebrities and fashion pieces and stuff because it's become like a big thing nowadays to, for stylists to go out and pull stuff from archives and whatnot but I think a lot of stylists um, just do the bare minimum really and kind of pull the easiest thing or things that they've been offered because I know nowadays designers actually offer some celebrities money to wear certain things um, so it becomes really a a situation where most I think actors or entertainers would probably just want to go for the person that pays them the most money because I guess most of these people don't really give a fuck about fashion anyway um, they don't really see the importance of trying to wear you know these amazing flipping looks and outfits and whatever it may be to create a moment um you know whatever an impression to create some entertainment some buzz whatever on a red carpet it just see it as an opportunity just to kind of cash in and extra make some extra money on top of it so they probably don't see it as a big deal but the ones that do take it seriously the stylists i mean i think this should be a good little wake-up call for people to kind of push the envelope a little bit and try a bit harder because i think when it comes to styling similar to like djs and stand-up comedians i think the majority of them are pretty terrible let's be real the majority of stylists are pretty shit um you know they don't really have um much of a they don't really have much knowledge when it comes to you know the history of fashion and stuff they don't really have um you know m much creativity they don't really have much range and um, everything has to be within arm's reach they don't really try to challenge or push their flipping clients and shit i understand sometimes the clients probably don't want to do it anyway but in general i don't think they really kind of go for it so i think if anything what law roach and zendaya are doing with their looks is that they're they're, they're kind of reminding people that this sort of stuff is is possible it's obviously not the easiest i'm sure there was probably there's probably a whole documentary they could do around how they secure this piece but the fact that it got done and the fact that it looked this stunning and the fact that it's created such waves and it's become such a big talking point on my side of social media and i think on some of the broadsheets has been amazing um the funny thing about law roach though after all the talk about him retiring and you know seeing him front and center on the on the red carpet for flipping the dune tube premiere it's really interesting to see because he's like he must be the most like fame hungry stylist i've ever seen in my entire life especially for somebody that was like you know a little bit um disillusioned with the industry wanted to quit and stuff like he loves the limelight innit? he's like the styling version of that flipping um famous um suge knight rant against p diddy right do you want to you don't want a record executive all up in your videos right he's all up in the post right he makes it known look i'm her stylist i'm the guy responsible for this so that's really funny when i first saw this immediate thought i had was like oh is that Laura Roach kind of looks like Lil, Lil Uzi Vert I know he's kind of got a bit of a will i am vibe here but if you zoom out he kind of looks like Lil Uzi Vert from this angle wearing this flipping there's something that Lil Uzi would definitely wear like it kind of has a little oozy vibe about it but yeah regardless he did a great job um he probably has every reason to stand next to her especially considering the pool it's a very impressive one um probably something that's going to go into the we're definitely going to go into the history books and it's going to be looked upon looked back upon for years to come i see people on my side of social media still talking about it 
till this day even though people have been dissecting it to its core yesterday so it's probably going to last forever and ever and ever and ever um obviously some of the original images here you can see from the original full 1995 couture collection you can see the model here wearing um the robo outfit underneath this amazing purple cape actually which i probably wouldn't mind the scenes and they are actually wearing on the red carpet either that would have been a pretty cool reveal imagine if she had three outfits in one she walked out on a red carpet had this red um cape um almost looking thing wearing with this amazing funnel neck took it off there was a robot you know um outfit revealed underneath and then she came back out again with the black dress that would have been pretty sick she had like three outfits in one but that's the original images from the actual collection itself as you can see there and of course we've got zendaya wearing it on the left hand side there as well so big up zendaya big up law roach absolutely incredible um look absolutely incredible pull and something that i can't wait to see evolve coming forward as well with all these amazing stylists being challenged and being pushed to do cool and interesting things but thoughts and prayers to flipping uh, Timothy Chamelet. <laughs> thoughts and prayers to Timothy Chamelet, right? He had to stand, you know, next to Zendaya while she's wearing this amazing couture outfit, right? Which, you know, has to be up there with one of the most flipping costly pieces of couture ever constructed, right? And then he has to stand next to her <laughs> in this boxy baggy t-shirt <laughs> and these pants. I don't know where these pants are from. They don't look like they fit correctly. Like, I don't know. This for me is a, a, a flipping representation of like red carpet looks in general, right? Women can go to red carpet looks and wear extravagant outfits, extravagant gowns, and guys essentially just have to turn up in a variation of a tuxedo. That's what it feels like. It feels like a representation of those sort of, you know, the, the ongoing battle. But this is also maybe backs up my theory that fashion with a capital F is not really for men. It's mostly for women. That's why you have this on the right hand side and you have this on the left hand side. Like that's what fashion is. Fashion for men includes t-shirts and jeans. Fashion for women includes this elaborate, right? This elaborate robot suit with these amazing see-through panels on the boobs and the biceps and the mid. Like that's what fashion for women in Philippines includes. So, unfortunately, all we have is style. Really, I think men have style, which is why it's important if you're a dude to really get your style dialed in. Like what actually works for your body, what actually works for your, you know, comfortability, your vibe, whatever it may be. And then you just kind of hone it in. So if you're, if you're like a car heart chore guy, you just got to dial in that outfit and make sure you got a good pair of jeans. You got a good pair of boots. You got a good jacket. You got a good t-shirt. You got a good beanie. Like you got to just dial in your look, but you can't really as a dude do the whole fashion thing with a capital F unless, you know, you kind of want to look flamboyant and most men don't really look want to look flamboyant, unfortunately. Um, so you kind of left with this sort of shit where you're wearing a big black baggy t-shirt and you're kind of trying to smile and, you know, act like everything's okay when you know inside you're, you know, you're screaming for the fucking heavens. But big up Timothy Chamelay regardless, big up Timmy Chamelay regardless.